What's up guys, this is the Atheist Chef, and surprise, surprise, G-Man has made a video, and I have a problem with it. So around 39 seconds in, G-Man says that atheists say that Christians' uh, faith is basically belief without proof. Well, technically, the word we were looking for was evidence, and the difference being is that evidence leads to proof. You know, multiple bits of evidence tend to lead to proof. Very slight, small distinction, and that's kind of nitpicky, but, you know, he's making a video about clearing up definitions, and he's clearly not doing that at all. Secondly, when an atheist claims that a Christian's faith is basically believing without evidence, what they are most of the time trying to say is that Christians do not have non-subjective or empirical evidence. Um, basically, a proof that is, or evidence, sorry, that basically can work for everyone. Um, because, you know, personal claims of interactions with something don't really count. Because think of how many people think that they see aliens, or think that they see ghosts. Are we going to claim that their interactions are true? Are we going to accept that subject, subjective data? No, most likely not. Some do, but it doesn't make it, it's not an objective data. It's not empirical. We don't believe it. So for that reason, we ask for objective data or non-subjective evidence that uh, shows to say that you have something more than the people that believe they saw aliens or ghosts. So yes, um, G to G man and Christians out there, atheists do need to learn to kind of put a different um, use of the word evidence because Christians do have evidence and evidence that they believe is enough. It's subjective evidence. It only works for them, but they feel as if they have evidence. So in the future, atheists, if you're watching, try to be more specific to the types of evidence because everybody has different definitions to those words. Now, uh, we're going to move on to about about a minute 35. Uh, G-Man asked a question similar to, if people did not have proof, would they a believer? Would they be a believer? Um, I actually completely agree with G-Man. If they did not have some kind of evidence or proof, for what they believe, they wouldn't believe it. That's 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 pretty much how belief works. You you have to be convinced of it for some reason. So they have evidence and they have proof. It's definitely not the proof that atheists are looking for, because we're looking for objective or empirical data or empirical evidence. But what you tend to offer is purely subjective. So you have evidence, but it's not the evidence that works for other people. It just works for you. Again, I refer back to the people that see ghosts and aliens. So around 2 minutes 34, we get to the real meat of the video. He quotes the scripture, Faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of the things unseen. Now, you kind of started this video talking about how you were going to clear up the misconceptions of the definitions of faith, However, all you did was rattle off scripture. However, you give no real definition or description of what the scripture actually means or what is implying. So, I went out and did some legwork, and I actually hopped on Reddit, and I actually went and asked uh, on the uh, slash Christianity subreddit, what is faith? And are atheists, you know, viewing faith the wrong term? Are we giving it the wrong definition? And, of course... <laughs> Pretty much every one of them said, yes, we were seeing it wrong. And I absolutely agree. Um, however, one thing was clear was that there was way more definitions than I thought. Um, uh, there was some Christians that believed, you know, the, the typical, as what G-Man described, was uh, belief without evidence. Um, and again, we refer to empirical evidence or non-subjective evidence. Um, some others believed that it was uh, belief despite the evidence, that regardless of whatever you evidence you throw at me, I know God is real, that this is all fake, or, well, I'm going to phrase that, that despite the evidence. I've even su seen some people, like my ex-girlfriend, 
that said the evidence was a conspiracy and it's planted by the devil, blah, blah, blah. You know, this is... She believed that Obama is the Antichrist, so that's the level of, you know, you know, caliber of people that we're working with on this argument most of the time. And I said most of the time, not all the time. Um, then I even had some people say that it was um, belief in uh, evidence beyond the evidence. And basically, we don't have all of the information, that we don't know everything, so that there's evidence for God that we just haven't found yet. And that's not a half bad convincing argument because well, we can't we haven't found it yet so not a terrible argument um, and not a bad half bad stance to uh, follow um, and then some more uh, mostly more liberal Christians um, talk about how faith is more of an act um, um, basically you have to be you know faithful um, just and that's kind of hard for me to describe um, but, you know, like when they say somebody is faithful or they're unfaithful, they're devoted, they're, they have a sense of honor or duty, they're, they're bound to that duty. And duty. Uh, number five was more along the lines of that you've seen God's goodness and you've seen what he has done or you heard of it and you have faith in that. That is your evidence. Now, I'm actually going to take that as what you mean by faith, that you believe in this last one. Um, and there's some others that I you know, mentioned as well, and they were kind of vague, so I kind of forgot what they were. Um, however, the point remains, it's really not that clear just by rattling off that scripture what your definition of faith is. So you're really not helping us out here, G-Man. Uh, there are way too many different de definitions and too many different uh, Christians that hold different beliefs about what faith actually is. So you need to d define your term just a little bit better. And around three minutes in, G-Man says something to the effect of, if he didn't answer my prayers, if he didn't talk to me, if the promises that he said would happen didn't happen, and a few other things, um, I wouldn't be a Christian. Um, as far as the prayers thing go, and this also uh, goes into your um, the proof of answered prayers, I made a video about that. And I'm hoping that you're going to get a chance to check that out eventually. And I'm going to link that down below. Because this is a lot to talk about. Um, that I do not want to try and bring it up here in the video. Because it would take me another five minutes. And uh, no, no thank you. But that video should talk about your answered prayers. Um, and regardless, it's still subjective. Then you also go off and say that, you know, if God didn't talk to me, then I wouldn't be a believer. Well, you don't even really know that it's God that talked to you. You feel that he is. You claim that he is. You know in your heart that he was. However, think of all the crazy people out there that felt that God was telling them to do something stupid. Think of those crazy people that said that God said to, you know, kill this person or, or you know, or whatever. You know, um... You, your claims that God speaks to you and tells you to do things or, you know, whatever, are not that much different than their claims. Sure, you can argue that God didn't tell them to, uh, you know, doesn't tell Christians normally to stab people in the face. Um, but, you know, uh, there's many Christians out there that they think God tells them not to go to the hospital because prayer will heal their child. Again, so you may be a different level than the stab your face kind of Christians. Uh, I'm sorry, not Christians, stab your face kind of crazy people. Um, but your claim of interaction with a deity is just as subjective as the person that claims, you know, that, that healing heals their child and they don't have to go to the hospital and they end up dying. So then you talk about promises that God said he would keep, and I'm not sure if you mean that on a personal promise between you and God or if you mean that in the Bible, so I'm really not going to touch that um, until you really give me points on what you mean. Uh, so then I'm going to move on to the healing, uh, your personal healing, that you've seen healing. Again, uh, very subjective, and I'm going to uh, refer back to the video, which I'm going to link it back down below again about your proof of answered prayers, because I believe I covered that, you know, pretty adequately there as well. So now we're going to move on to the, um, 
that he got me through problems. Um, it's also subjective because you don't really know that God actually did it. We can't prove objectively that he did it. It only satisfies your personal belief, but it doesn't help with anybody else because um, you can't claim that because it's very possible that your belief in a God um, encouraged you through that belief. You believe so much that uh, God was going to help you that it kind of triggered that brains your your confidence and whatnot. Um, and so you were actually able to do it yourself because you felt that God was going to do something. So you thought to yourself, yep, well, I'm going to do it now because I've got God's help. So you were able to trudge on through and push through, fight through all the little crappy life that we all have to go through. However, us non-believers actually do the same thing. But we don't use God. We just use our resolve and say, well, I have to do this. I have responsibilities. I got to take care of this myself. And so we muck through it the same way. But we don't add a God to it. We don't tack him on and give him the credit for it. So once again, subjective. So that's it. So G-Man, I hope you see this video. Hopefully you'll be able to come up with something, a response. Um, I look forward to it. Um, I will also be doing a video about the misconceptions about the word faith and go into greater detail uh, and talk about how both Christians and atheists are um, misusing this word in their arguments. Um, talking about how there's such a disagreement on terms that we end up just talking past each other and really not getting anywhere. Um, uh, so hopefully this will be a small little uh, push and a nudge in the right direction to helping make better arguments. Uh, so that's it tonight, folks. Uh, thank you so much for watching. This is the Atheist Chef. Thank you so much. Peace. And as always, comment, give me some thumbs up, share with friends, subscribe to the channel. Thanks a lot.